Now, for some of you, that way you don't get lost. I am going to call this blank, OK? Or blankety blank, OK? So blankety blank here, because apparently there are some people who just don't like the word. So I'll just call it blankety blank or bleep, OK? Or beep, because nowadays you have to do that. With what, you're, uh, with what you're saying. I could make noises, but then that would, uh, that would cause some misunderstandings, you know. So I won't make noises. And then we're going to call this particular group, OK? We're going to call them the privileged class. All right? We're going to call them the privileged class. So I'll just say it that way. And I don't want people to get lost. Privilege class. And then uh, bleep, OK? If you follow along with me and change your definitions, because nowadays schools have changed definitions. That's so confusing. You don't know what to call each other now. So because of that, you live in that generation, you might as well put up with this one. Amen. And then how I throw terms and definitions around. Now. We heard that the bleep is going around. And there have been several states declaring state of emergency. And a lot of people have been concerned, oh boy, here we go again. It's going to repeat what happened last time. The title of the article from NPR News is California and Illinois declare states of emergency to help fight beep outbreaks. So we got faithful Faithful California again. What a wonderful state, man. What a wonderful state. I have no idea why God wants me to pastor a church in a godforsaken area like here. I wish I could do a Jonah, but I fear the Lord more. Amen. But I think it's just God's sense of humor on this wicked world. And that way he could shine a light and show the Bible-believing churches and Christians out there that there's a faithful remnant yeah. that if they can stand their ground, other people should be able to. And they have no excuse to quit out on the Lord, to quit fighting. And we have so many churches folding, apostatizing, and compromising. So our church is going to be evidence that we don't by the grace of God. I can fall any time, but by God's grace, we can stand. This is from the SF Gate News, so that's San Francisco itself. Obviously, they're going to say something. Title of the article is, San Francisco declares state of emergency over beep. Here's what that means. So far, nothing where it goes uh, heavy rules, shall we say, or hindrances to the workings of normal community, if you understand what I'm talking about. But we have yet to see. It's amazing. Things like this always happen right before a big revival meeting like our church is about to have. Isn't it strange how the devil works? Very strange. This is from Science. Title of their article, even the big name itself, woohoo, is going to say something. Title of the article, who, chief, declares... Beep, an international emergency after expert panel fails to reach consensus. As you can see, I'm going through a lot of beep, beep, beep stuff. You're going to have to get used to that. What's the concern? What's going to happen to our future? Why are they doing this? Again, what's the devil's plan behind everything? Well, I'm going to give several more articles. I'm going to show you the outlook of the world, how they view this, what they're trying to do, and whatever they're trying to do, if it's a certain spirit behind that, then we go to that spirit and find out what his deep intentions are and if the scriptures might show it. And then when we compare that with current events and history, but most importantly the Bible, then we can see a pattern. And I'm going to show you that. So let's look at the outlook of the world first, how they view this. 
This is from the New England Journal of Medicine. This is a professional article source. So before people get upset, the title of the article, where did we get beep and how did this happen throughout our whole world? Well, there's a privileged class that's been uh, doing this, beep. So title of the article from the New England Journal of Medicine, beep. Infection in humans across 16 countries, April through June, 2022. And it says right here, quote, overall 98% of the persons with infection from the beep were privileged class. Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? Man, those white people, man, those white people, privileged class. That's what I meant, right? Okay, let's keep reading here. Title of the article, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just angry and just so angry at these white people, right? These, these white devils, man, ruining our whole country. I'm having so much fun right now, I guess. Uh, a lot, I just get angry, but I'm enjoying it at the same time. This is kind of weird. <laughs> Title of the article from Axios. And yeah, what is the concern about people with this certain privileged class? Their children. Yes. Title of the article from Axios. CDC confirms first U.S. cases of beep in children. And these children, who are they around? Quote, both of those children are traced back to individuals who have come from the privileged class community. White devils, you know. So from now on, I'm going to call privileged class white devils, okay? Because apparently, this is how you can uh, get the approval from big tech and government and universities nowadays. So let's just, let's just call them white devils maybe, right? Then maybe uh, they'll start uh, pu uh, putting down my views and maybe it can start going up a bit. Anyways, this privileged class right here, we can see a lot of it is tied. Title from Science, and this is from science too, why the beep outbreak is mostly affecting the privileged class. And when you read that article, you get a bunch of people who get alarmed and afraid because these people have so much protection yeah, they do. and privilege that they can get away with things so when you attack this certain elitist type of people, then, oh my goodness, no, that's not what I meant. So then it scared all the scientific community. So then the scientific community, what they will say is, you know, it's not only targeting uh, the privileged class, but it's targeting also the persecuted class. Let's call it persecuted class, all right? Persecuted class are also capable as well. I think so, right? The victims, right? It's attacking the victims too. I would say amen to that one. I feel like that, right? Persecuted all the time. The government, this wicked, evil government, and the school system and the media, they just keep persecuting. So basically they're saying that a bunch of people could be capable and prone to this. But then they can't deny the huge percentage of the privileged class that why is it the privileged class gets it? 98%, and that's huge. So then the science article that I gave to you, if you were to read it, they will say, I'm not saying that beep is from the privileged class, but, but we can't deny this huge percentage. So there's some, at least, if you are going to be a serious scientist and look at the data, actual empirical data, we might not admit cause and effect, but there's an association you can't deny. So we have to find the cause and effect. 
And yeah, I'm giving research language right here, okay? So you can't deny it. There's something going on. So then it's worth looking into. You might say, why is it worth looking into? Because there's a state of emergency for crying out loud. But it doesn't uh, affect the elitists right here, the privileged class, because they feel like they can get away with anything. So here's a video, and uh, you can actually, the title of the video, I'll just say the title of the video, Public Health Experts Recommend Orgies During Beep Outbreak. Yes, you heard that right. If you were to actually look up the city, all right, I'll just call it the city, that's about probably one hour away from us, all right? Let's just call it the city, okay? Its favorite color is purple, if not the rainbow. So they happen to, if you go to their blogs and the websites of these people, they're, they're all gathering together. They're doing their wicked, obscene stuff. And the privileged class feel like they can still get away with it. Uh, but then when, when we had two years ago, two years ago when we had that incident happen, churches were shut down. They said you couldn't gather together. Yeah, it didn't need to. But then with this particular city, those parties, they didn't oh, yeah. shut it down. And, yeah. you know, it's not a big deal. And, Essential. yeah, persecuted class, yeah. right? Who's the victim? Who's the real victim? Who's the real persecuted class right here? Come on, preacher. Uh, you can uh, find that video title on YouTube. It's amazing. And the person shows actual blogs and all the documents of it. Just watch it. It's, it's horrifying. But guess what? Oh, oh, they, they can get away with it. They can get away with it. What the Bible talked about Sodom and Gomorrah, we are now seeing in our day and age where they feel like they can get away with such similar sins and keep carrying it on without being, without being prevented or hindered in any way. And they can just freely act. Why? Too much privilege from media, government, schools nowadays. Oh, those white devils, man. They just get so much protection. This is from the MIT Technology Review. Title of the article, Privileged Class Misinformation is Making It Harder to Contain the Spread of Beep. You know what they're whining about? So they're whining about misinformation spreading now online. Because when people are talking about beep, <laughs> that they're saying, you're just associating that with the privileged class right here. And that's just mean, and that's just very cruel, and that's just whatever liberal terms they want to call it. So, because of that, big tech is on their side. Big tech can be on their side, thanks to the stupid higher ed schools and the news media complaining about it. So they get the protection of higher ed schools, big tech, and not only that, they get the protection of Fauci himself. This is from GPB News, and they actually use uh, sources from PBS and NPR. The title of the article is... Fauci says the government must help fight privileged class stigmas surrounding beep. So <laughs> Fauci is even defending these people. Now you get the world's most number one health expert defending. A lot of privilege these guys got. Lots of privilege. Lots of privilege these people. Man. Here's another one from NPR News, title of the article. Critics say, beep, all right, the way that it's actually spelled and written out right here, is a racist name, but it's not going away anytime soon. Oh, oh, boo. 
Boo. I don't know what, what other name you want to call it. You got a name for that one? I, I, I'm, I, I can't wait for what other name they'll call it. And I guarantee you this, it'll be easy to point out any stereotype with the way they named it. So they're going to have a hard time renaming it. They say it's not going away anytime soon. You know why, fool? You're not the one making the name. <laughs> why are they going to call it? I don't know, you know. Maybe, you know, you can go like this as a posture and make noises. I don't know. I don't know what you, I don't know what you want to call it now. So, with so much protection, what does this mean here? If you recall my previous video about, uh, it was a pretty crazy theory, you might recall, but it made a lot of sense. The Georgia Guidestones tied to UFOs. I mentioned last time that the reason why two years ago that spread happened, all right, butter spread, okay, that butter spread happened two years ago, a lot of people love that butter, so <laughs> I'm having so much fun, guys, all right, so <laughs> people are just so confused, AI's just going, <laughs> We had that huge spread going around two years ago where everyone said, please pass the butter, you know. <laughs> okay, anyway, I got to stop. I got to stop. I'm just having too much fun. Okay, I got to stop. All right, it, worst case scenario, this video is called sarcasm. Every single bit. Every single bit is called sarcasm and entertainment. Anyways, <laughs> when, when the spread was going around two years ago, I mentioned that a lot of the UFO activity got up surprisingly pretty high. So then there's a certain tie and connection. I gave you a theory of mine. What if the reason why whoever is in charge of passing out the butter so much and why they want to do what they call population control tactics, some people have talked about that, and I don't know what that has to do with butter spread, but why they're doing this so that people can adapt and then change. And there's no doubt a lot of the things within us did change. Yeah. So then we're changing to adapt more to the environment because that's basic science. Why would they do that? So that the weaker can die out if they can't handle the newer environment. And why this new environment has to happen is because those sons of God, those aliens, have to come down. And basic science teaches when they come down, it can cause something detrimental or even a virus. So because of that, that's why there has to be containment or how you survive viruses is normally through basic evolutionary concepts, survival of the fittest, adaptation. How many more times do we have to pass out the butter, right? If the butter spread happens more and more times, we can adapt more and more times. Okay, why is beep the one that's next? Ever thought about that? And isn't it interesting, why is it, contained to, why is it connected with something sexual? Yeah. How about that? Are you connecting dots already? You can see what's going on here. First of all, the Bible mentioned when the Antichrist comes that it has to be this way, that when the, the coming of the Son of Man at the tribulation, they were marrying and given to marriage. If you look at Genesis 6, it was mankind intermingling with those sons of God, aliens, Nephilim, whatever you want to call them. So they were intermingling with these celestial beings. God says the tribulation, that must happen. So there has to be something sexual that happens where those sons of God intermingle with those humans. What does all of that have to do with privileged class protection? And what does this have to do with the release of the beep? Why do we have to go through several more of these 
incidents or butter spreads, so to speak? Well, I'm going to tie it all together. Let's go one by one. If we have the mindset of the privileged class way of living and how we do our sexual conduct, this is the typical liberal mentality. The typical liberal mentality is nothing wrong unless it's consensual. And that's why they keep adding, uh, it's not enough when you go A, B, C, D. No, no, that song's too short. Yeah. They have to go A, B, C, D, then E, and then F, and then G, H, I, and then it goes on and on and on, and Z is not the end, okay? Yeah. They, they keep going down. And then somewhere between the letters, they go plus and minus, you know, A plus, A minus, and then F minus, F plus, it's somewhere in between, okay? It's a spectrum. That's how you practice your lifestyle, your activity. So that's the liberal mindset. So then, this actually came up. This is from Unheard. Unheard is one of my favorite websites because what they do is they take philosophers and then a bunch of higher ed professors and scientists together and then they give a lot more informed opinions. So this is a philosophical question that was shared on Unheard, which is interesting. Would you have sex with an alien? You know what they said? They mention here, obviously it's a hypothetical question and some might say a silly one. And yet it's really quite clever. It collapses into one lurid scenario, an important ideological divide between those who base their ethical judgments on liberal morality alone and those who still heed older, deeper moral instincts. So kind of like Christians, for example, right? We're the traditional way, the old way of doing things on morals. Whereas you get the left side who's liberal morality. Liberal morality is primarily concerned with individual autonomy. Very crudely, it can be summed up as, if it makes you happy and doesn't hurt anyone else, then what's the problem? Why do liberals talk like that? Because already they're singing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, so used to that singing and putting it in children's classes and schools and growing up into that, being brainwashed by TV, that's why the mind and the heart becomes more liberal with sexual activity that it doesn't stop with A, B, C, and D. It can go endlessly. Now, did you follow what I'm saying or was that too deep? <laughs> like I said, I, I'm trying to teach this in a way where you get what I'm saying, where you get what I'm saying. The immediate problem, of course, is that the desires of different individuals come into conflict. Hence, the philosophical effort to construct frameworks to adjudicate between competing claims. However, liberalism is also challenged by other systems of morality, whether political, traditional, or religious, that hold to alternative or additional ethical standards. The moral foundations theory developed by Jonathan Haidt and colleagues is all about this challenge. Their research shows how conservatives aren't just motivated by the care and fairness concerns that are central to the liberal worldview, but also care about things like loyalty, authority, and sanctity. Which brings us back to that question, would you have sex with an alien? If one modifies the statement to read, instead of I would have sex with an attractive alien, would you, yes or no? Well, the liberal mind would say this, the conservative mind might say this, right? But let's change the word. I would have sex with an attractive animal. The overwhelming majority of liberals and conservatives alike would be united in strong disagreement. And not just, in, not just because they're not themselves attracted to animals, their yuck reaction would go much further if they had to philosophically justify their revulsion, the liberals would probably say something about consent, animals being unable to give it. 
The conservatives, however, might point out that animals don't consent to being killed and eaten, and then et cetera, et cetera. That is why the question about the attractive alien is such a clever and revealing one. The alien is presumably sentient and therefore able to give his, her, its consent. But like an animal is of a different species. Having sex with him, her, it would therefore cross a line. So uh, this is uh, opposition to sex with aliens may not be the most pressing of political issues, but there are other moral instincts. So this question is a pretty good pointer, and it makes you think. There is no doubt that the liberal logic and mindset, if this were to happen, and do you believe what your Bible says that this will happen? If it happens, what do you think they're going to say? As that article mentioned, if it feels good, you do it. As long as it doesn't hurt somebody else and you get the consent. Okay, then think about this. What happens, basic science, remember what I, what I told you? Basic science is if something from outer space comes down and then you are to have activities with it, it doesn't go on normally and nothing bad happens, no virus outbreak, right? It's possible. But even more so if you have sex. Way more so. Okay. Do you see what's going on here? I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. First, it was a butter spread two years ago. But in order to reach this point where the devil wants intermingling with aliens, let's put another butter spread, but this time it's going to reach right here at the core. Now the next step, beep, that's what's next. But here's an even bigger catch. The bigger catch is, think about the world. They're going to freak out. They don't want a uh, virus to spread. So then they're going to make a big deal about it. So then like two years ago, maybe we'll do lockdowns, shutdowns, uh, distancing. Oh, no, not if it's a, it's a privilege class. That's right. That's right. Because that's pretty illegal to say. So then, in other words, just like right now you're seeing, you can, and they encourage you, keep up with the lifestyle because you'll be protected because you're a protected class. But what about, you know, what about butter spread? It's going to spread even more. And no, 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 you are protected still, nevertheless. Genius, isn't it? Think about this. Think about... If the, if the privileged class can keep up with their lifestyle while being protected and people don't worry about some kind of butter spread, what about these guys when they come down? When they come down and then the liberal mindset is, well, you know, I've done this with other privileged class people and I can keep on that spectrum, so what's wrong with doing this? then these guys can join the privileged class protection. And then in spite of butter spread going everywhere, they can still be protected. Wow. What if that's the next launch and the next plot and plan? You ever thought about it? Because um, with population control going on and people not really conforming and changing, Maybe there's another tactic we can go around this. Let's do the beep. That way we don't have to worry about adapting to the environment when those aliens come down and be ready. If we're never ready to begin with, we got to justify intermingling with this guys in spite of a butter spread and justify our, and encourage this activity in spite of the butter spread. Maybe that's what they're doing. They're changing games. So, wonder what's on their minds. But this makes a lot of sense to me because basic science is 
if Satan and his minions come on down and then we have a really bad uh, spread going around, the world's not going to really follow that. But if they encourage that kind of sexual lifestyle because um, the privileged class way of doing sex has always been protected and justified and even encouraged, then maybe the devil can use, some, can use that excuse for them when they come down and do their lifestyle, practice their lifestyle. Do you follow along with what I'm saying right here? I'm trying to go as clear as I can. So I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Here's an article from Live Science. If aliens exist, would they have sex? <coughs> Obviously, you can't do it because of what? The question isn't entirely... Uh, the evolution of sex is a tricky subject. Sexual reproduction is costly. It requires finding a mate, convincing that mate to mingle DNA with you, and opening yourself up to the possi possibility of sexual sexually transmitted disease or pred predation while you're busy wooing. So that, they say this is complicated because you're going to have a spread. But not if several years the beep has been constantly justified and protected. Oh, yeah. See, that's why I'm driving at. If this privileged class can keep up with their sexual activity and be justified and protected, so can aliens if they were to come down. That's my point right here. That's my point. So it's so interesting about this article. Why would they want sex, right? Why would they want sex? Genesis 6 is plain and mentioned that because the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So that's one. However, <coughs> there are some interesting reports that give some different opinions. But before I go to these different reports, I want you to look at the scriptures first. Now we finally turn to scripture because I had to build up one by one. Let's first go to Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2. Think about it. What do the scriptures say about aliens who did come down and intermingle with mankind? They did have a spread. They did have a spread. That's what happened. So this is very different from Genesis 6. Think about it. In Genesis 6, they intermingled. Maybe there was a lot of uh, spread. Maybe there were a lot of diseases that did happen. But it's strange that Genesis don't really record it. However, we do know this. The environment changed after Genesis 6. The environment changed, and the mankind was trying to repeat Genesis 6. They're trying to repeat Genesis 6 with intermingling with God knows what out there. It was a real big, fat mess, actually. And even the aliens or sons of God, there was some form of activity, some kind of sexual practice going on there. But what happened consequently was there was a huge disease, an outbreak that resulted. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 2. Let's look at this. First of all, Deuteronomy 2.20, the land of Canaan where the Jews went. Who's there? The Nephilim. Verse 20, that also uh, look at verse 19, excuse me, 19. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them, for I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of what? Giants. Giants dwelt there in old time. And the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. Of people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them. Oh, we know the Lord destroyed them before, right? With the flood. But they came out again. And they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. See? These guys took over. So these are called Nephilim, for some of you who didn't know. It's also called Nephilim. 
Now notice that these are the giants. These are not sons of God or fallen angel. Do you see that there? These are not fallen angels or sons of God. A lot of times I'll interchangeably use alien, son of God, and uh, alien, son of God, as well as those Nephilim or those giants. A lot of times I'll use it interchangeably because they're all from the same family. However, they're not all the same, okay? They're not all the same. At times, I believe that when you see alien activity out there, it could be one of those angels, those fallen angels. But at other times, I believe it's the offspring of those angels. So when those fallen angels intermingle with the human, they gave birth to abominations. And these abominations were Nephilim. They were also called giants or mutants or otherwise known as aliens. So I will call them Nephilim. If I consider it as only one specific group, Nephilim, and they have no part with the sons of God, it's going to make sense why they want to do uh, sexual activity. The fallen angels, it's pretty simple. It's because they find the daughters of men to be fair. But what I think is this, what I think is where you hear about uh, those alien abduction activities and the <clears throat> uh, sexual reproduction experiments and all that, that don't fit, uh, that don't fit with those fallen angels because those fallen angels, they just come down and they just mate. But then think about this. This Nephilim is an abnormal creation. It doesn't follow normal workings of the universe, normal, the normalcy of God's creation. So then because they're an abnormal function, how can they survive, thrive, and continue? They have to use their wits or their technology or the God of everything, science. When mankind's dabble with science, you know what you could do? You can keep up with the sexual activity of privileged class and get away with things and not be worried about the consequences of sin. Yeah. Do you follow what I'm saying? That's why people commit fornication and adultery because the workings of science provide us some means of protection where we can encourage sinful activity. Why? Because the way God created this universe does not flow well with your sin. But why, does, why do sinful people continually thrive in a civilization? I mean, look at the deterioration of San Francisco. It's so bad because of sin, right? You cannot function well without sin. Yet, we know a higher education that they're, that they're uh, pushing it, they're ramping it, people are getting involved. Technology is increasing way up. You know why? The excuse is science. Without their dabbling of science, they would have been shot to pieces a long time ago. It's the workings of science. That's how you can find ways around God's normal functioning of creation and the consequences of sin. Nephilim, the way that they live and they're born, it don't function well with God's normal creation. So then they have to continue. How? How are they going to continue if they're advanced in science? You wonder why their technology and their science might be 100 years ahead of you? You know what the Bible says about uh, this group of people? If after the land of Canaan, God ordered them to destroy everything. So look at Deuteronomy. Uh, look at Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. God told them to destroy everything. And then you, don't he you hardly hear about the Nephilim. The last Nephilim activity you would hear is David, soldiers conquering those Goliaths and his brothers. But after that, you don't hear much about them anymore. Why? Because they can't survive and thrive with the way God's creation function and run. So they have to keep on going, and maybe that's why they're hiding out. Maybe that's why they don't reveal themselves as much. Maybe that's why you hear reports where after Phoenicia, which is where Canaan is, all that Nephilim activity, where Phoenicia carried its coins to South America later years, and then you see Nephilim activity there after the land of Canaan.
Why? They were being pushed. And maybe that's why you hear in Great Britain, Nephilim activity after the days of the Apostle Paul or during his days. Why? They were being pushed away from the furthest land mass. So think about it. Then what all of this that I'm pointing out is what if they're a dying breed? Which is no doubt they are an extinct. They're, going, they're doomed to extinction in the Bible. If you read it throughout the Bible, they're doomed to extinction. The children of Israel have their orders to them, and in the New Testament, you don't hear about their activity. That's why the devil has to switch it to demon possession. Demon possession wasn't really that common, you'll notice, at the Old Testament, but in New Testament it was. And Nephilim activity wasn't that common in New Testament, but it was in Old Testament. I gave that teaching before, too. I don't know if you recall that. But there's, see, there's, a, there's something going on. He's switching games. The devil's switching games to carry on his activity, his seed in some way or form in every dispensation. Let's look at Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Look at verse 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. He's talking about the land of Canaan. You know why God wants annihilation? And this is where atheists have complained about, you know, genocide and stuff like that. They don't realize this. They don't realize how corrupt and disease spread that land was. And they didn't have, and you got to realize this, they didn't have, you know, technology and all that kind of stuff that time. Disease is so rampant and bad, and people don't understand this. Sin is so tragic that sometimes you have to accept and face the music. There's no other way around it except tragic consequences itself. But people don't want to accept the tragic consequence. Genocide? No, I cannot. That, what a mean God. No, no, it's not a mean God. It's how mean your sin is. But you could care less and you want to keep it practiced. And so these people could care less about their sinful activities. And because of that, that's the reason why God had to wipe them out. Why? Otherwise, you're going to get the diseases at verse 15. What kind of sexual activity were they doing? Look at Leviticus 20. Look at Leviticus 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Now, I'm going to uh, give a lot of censorship here, so get ready, all right? Just look at the verse so that you can follow along. Leviticus chapter uh, 20, verse 13. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a beep also lie with beep, as he lieth with the woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. You'll notice at verse 15, And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and he shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Look at that. Read that whole verse. I ain't going to read it, but it will shock you. It will gross you out. That's all kinds of grotesque sexual activity that went from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I because they had such liberal morality. And what did God say about this activity? He actually said, if you look at verse 22, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell there and spew you not out. You see that wording? The land can't contain them. The land is like dying out and grossing itself out. You ever wonder why some purple city one hour away from us, that the land is going yeah. on practically every street corner? Yeah, that's it. Be sure your sin will find you out. Sin has a consequence. In spite of the advancement of technology and higher ed, you see how well they clean up the land. Anyways, uh, 
Verse 23, and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. See, that's the Canaanite nation. They were practicing it. The same land of Canaan that had all that Nephilim coming out. See that? There was something weird going on. They were doing a lot of strange sexual activity where those Nephilim were hanging around. And why is that? Because we're just so creative with our sexual lifestyle. So we can go from A to Z, if not even more. But then the outcome is beep, 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 and beep. Now think about it, the tribulation, that's going to happen again. And that's basic science too. Basic science, it's not going to be very healthy living. That's right. There's going to be all kinds of please pass the butter going around. That's how, ba that's how bad it is. It's going to go everywhere. So how can you keep that up? How can you encourage the whole world to do that? Wouldn't they be scared of that? Like I told you before, not unless you give some kind of protection. So since the ABCs are getting protected privilege and they can keep up their lifestyle, D, E, F, G, H, all the way to Z can get the same too. Yeah. That's the devil's plan. That's the devil's plan. That's why he's doing all of this right now. This is a wicked lifestyle. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. All the way to the basics. That's why God had to burn up Sodom and Gomorrah. It was so bad. Look at the book of Jude. But it was so, it was so disturbing that they were even doing it with animals. Look at the book of Jude. Look at the book of Jude. Look at verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, see sexual activity, and going after what? Strange flesh. Do you know what? That, they were doing strange stuff. They were seeking after strange flesh. What's that? Strange means another or other. Okay, what's another or other flesh? Look at 1 Corinthians 15 at your spare time. I'm not going to turn there. But other and other types of flesh are animals. Anyways, who are they following along? Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 7, it says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, in like manner. Wait, wait, wait. Sodom and Gomorrah was following whose example? The previous verse. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Ah, oh, Genesis 6, those fallen angels. Sodom and Gomorrah was following their example. That's why they're encouraged to do their sexual behavior and experiment with all kinds of things, and then it just turns into a bunch of butter spreads going around. Here are several interesting articles, and I pulled this up from JSTOR. This is a review of uh, an article, Alien Nation. And this is from Indiana University. If you actually uh, read the material in here, they say in this uh, article, uh, it's not showing the image, unfortunately. Uh, I had the image over here. But if you read, uh, if you read that article, it actually said this. I should have taken a pic shot of it. The article mentioned that there are researchers who have started to wonder, and it's even psychologists too, people who have claimed alien abductions, it's not simply like you have a mental illness. The reason why is they don't actually study these cases. When, when the researchers and psychologists who have actually delved into these cases of these victims uh, who claimed alien abduction, Sure, you can get some crazies in there, but the, they realized that a lot of them were sane people and they didn't have a mental history. So that was weird. So then by their statements, and here's another shocking part, another strange weird part is these reports from all these different clients is shared the same story. 
So then they realized they were telling a truth about something. So then they had to find some scientific explanation. So then they went to neurobiologists and everything. They came up with wacky theories like neurons firing. So because neurons firing, they pictured some kind of glow out there of a person and then they get sleep paralysis. But they had to come up with a lot of wacky stuff. They'll say that because they have previous knowledge of a cultural phenomenon of aliens and something and occult stuff that that was used later to traumatize them, they'll use that kind of explanation. But they, but psychologists and researchers, they still came to the conclusion it's not a satisfactory answer. They can't deny that this is something at least very strange that there's no explanation for. So when you look at these alien abduction uh, stories, you know what they reported? They would report that it goes on some of these steps. They, uh, eyewitness accounts and witness accounts always differ with each other, but they share the same point, right? That's how you find the truth, right? It's the same thing with historical sources. They might differ with each other, but if they agree and talk about the same thing, that's when you can dig up the true statements and the facts. So that's how you do it with these witnesses. But anyway, I'm talking gobbledygook. I'm just saying all this so that I can justify what I'm about to say, okay? That I'm not just talking like some kind of uh, crazy shenanigan. Anyways, the eyewitness testimonies go that uh, they first cannot move. That's how it goes. They first cannot move. It'll be a voice or a light or something. And then what these aliens do, which is very strange, then they take them. And a lot of these witnesses, when they'll talk about that just time went out of place, like time stopped. It's interesting about dispensationalism, God is without time. And it makes you wonder about these demonic beings, if they understand God's workings without time, and then they can jump to different places. But anyway, I, I, I digress, okay? That's a different teaching. So, but the point is, is that it's like out of time. Then they're experimented upon. And one of those strange experiments, one of those just uh, confusing experiments is they always put some kind of pretty person and they're infatuated and they're so interested, these Nephilims are so interested to see how humans uh, have sex with each other. Then another thing is this. This is very strange. This is where you get charismatic, Pentecostal, dangerous stuff, okay? Then they're told to uh, do something with some kind of foreign or alien devices, but they don't know how to do it. But then all of a sudden they get some kind of feeling and experience where they can understand it. And then because of that, they're able to do it. That's why this vision stuff, you better watch out for that kind of stuff, all right? That kind of vision, Pentecostal, charismatic experience stuff, that's demonic stuff. Yeah. Where you feel something, where you feel like I had an enlightenment, yeah. I have an understanding that went beyond it. They say it was some kind of satisfied feeling, something like that, it was strange. This is demonic stuff, guys, yeah. this is Nephilim stuff. Another thing, this is really scary, but they would, do exper uh, they would dabble their body, like it's some kind of lab experiment, but they don't use tools. Some of them said that th they'll just make them drink a liquid, mm, like Catholic mass. But anyway, I digress, okay? Uh, it's a lot of other crazy stuff, all right? But I digress. But that's what it's used to experiment with the body and see. And uh, what's even uh, more curious, it's more aimed at their sexual organ parts. If you look at a lot of the account testimonies of these people, it's always their sexual organ parts that the Nephilim always seem to be infatuated with. Here's something you never thought of before, but women, they were, it was said about the women that they would be impregnated, but then through painless abortion, so to speak, something painless where they can terminate the pregnancy and they get pregnant again. Terminate the pregnancy, get pregnant again, but it's all painless. It makes you wonder about the recent abortion thing with UFO activity and the spread going around if, there's, if all of this is tied in some way. I think there is. 
I think there is. There's something demonic with all this that you hear about, with Roe versus Wade and all that kind of stuff. There's no doubt something demonic behind all this, guys, I see. Anyways, why are the Nephilim so infatuated with that? Why do they want to do that? Well, uh, that article that I cited to you about uh, will an alien uh, have sex, it's interesting. This is from uh, scientific inquiries, okay? From a scientific standpoint. When they study all organisms out there, why sexual reproduction is so important is two things. It, basically just one thing. It's survival. Survival of their offspring and their seed to continue. In the Bible, the Nephilim are dying out, right? That would make a lot of sense why they're infatuated with the sexual stuff. They want to continue on. Now, think about this one. This is another strange thing. Uh, two more documented sources and then... Uh, Actually, I got three more, and it's already nine. I got to end this quickly. Okay, let me say this real quick. But another document here from J. Storr, title of the article, this is the British Journal of Social Work by Oxford University Press. Satanist abuse and alien abduction, a comparative analysis theorizing temporal lobe activity as a possible connection between anomalous memories. Okay, what's the abstract here? It says right here that this paper compares two sets of scarcely believable reports, those of Satanist abuse survivors and those of people with apparent memories of alien abductions. There are striking parallels between the two phenomena. Okay, now you got a, people who experience alien abduction or people who claim to have experienced satanic, uh, satanic sacrifice or kidnappings, you know, those Satan worship stuff where they've been victimized by Satanists. They claim that the experience, they're strikingly parallel. So they're wondering why, uh, what, what's going on right here. Well, to a biblical Christian, it's pretty obvious because they share the same father, that's why. But to a scientist, it bedazzles them and they try to find some kind of neurological explanation. But to us, it's simple. It's because they have the same father, the same wickedness. That's why they share the same activities with each other. But why are alien abductions compared with Satan worship here? Why are they strikingly parallel? You know what I think? I'll think I think it's this. Go to Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12. This is what I think. I think the reason why this alien abduction thing has to do with Satan and why uh, he, wants to, he wants to harm human beings and is infatuated with this sexual stuff is because he only has a short time. Think about it. If you're doing sexual reproduction and the tribulation is seven years or ten years or three and a half, or however long you want to put it, that's not a lot of time. You know what I mean? It's not a lot of time where you can have sexual reproduction to build, and survive, uh, build a race, so to speak, that's powerful, a civilization that thrives. That's not enough time. Unless you get the workings of this, to dabble with human beings and you can speed up the process. And maybe that's why those aliens started to do those terminated pregnancies over and over and over again. Some of those witnesses, it's kind of strange, they said what they see is a child alien coming out. This is weird stuff. Why would Satan want that strong surviving race? Because you got to realize this, he's preparing an army and he wants to go against God. He knows his time is short, and he lost the battle with his armies. He needs to prepare a new army. Look, look at Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Look at verse uh, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He lost the battle up in heaven, him and his fallen beings. Well... The devil knows what the Bible says. Jesus is going to come on earth again. The devil ain't going to pull the same tactic with the same minions. 
it would make sense. He's going to build up a greater army. That's just common sense in warfare. That if you want to win, you're going to build up your army. So verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the who? Inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. There's something going on with them. Woe to them. For the devil has come down unto you. He's going to do something with them. Having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a what? Short time. He knows his time is short. So this is what I think. I think that Satan, and it makes a lot of sense. If the devil, if you're any general that loses a battle, you know you're, you can't battle again with the same army. You're going to whip up your army into a more powerful army. Why do you think they want to ex put experiments on us? Because seven years or ten years or whatever that tribulation timeline is, is not enough time. So they have to, but if you do these scientific experiments, you can boost it. You can make it faster. That's what I think would make the most sense here. That would explain why that satanic sacrifice stuff and alien abduction, Satan worship stuff, why there's a connection. There's something going on to all of this. Satan, what he wants to do is always dabble and experiment with humans. What's an example? An example is Job 1. An example is Job 1 where the devil wants to do a trial test run on you. And then understand human pattern and history. And he's pretty good at it. He's been doing it for 6,000 years. And with the combination of science and his knowledge with his previous experiments with humans, he knows. It makes a lot of sense to me on this. Okay. Uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll end it here. I was going to read this. No, no, no. You know what? I'll, I'll read this interesting article. I'll end it off right here. Okay? This is from the Washington Post. This is, I don't know if you've heard of Luis Elizondo. Have you heard of that? Okay. I don't know if you watched that interview. This is from Washington Post to Liberal. This is what you want to hear. Ba the title is, it's a transcript, UFOs and National Security with Luis Eliz uh, Elizondo, former director, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. This is the head, and the head of this program actually admitted, he doesn't want to say it, but he admitted basically there's alien activity. Okay, you know what he says? This is going to be surprising to you. I'm going to read some. One is, and the Washington Post Journal uh, was interviewing uh, Louise, and this is how he responded to some of these questions. One is, let me read it here. Uh, it's, a it's a long transcript. There's a lot that uh, he actually says. Let's see, 99 percent. Okay. She asked, the reporter asked, but as someone who is more steeped and in the know on the data and the facts, do you have any more narrow idea in that 99% of things that we are unaware of what this could be exactly? Talking about that UAP, or I'll translate it in my terms, alien. That's why I think it's aliens, okay? Even though they call it UAP. UAP. Okay. This is how Elizondo responds. You know, through observations, we are, we are quite convinced that we're dealing with a technology that is multi-generational, several generations ahead of what we consider next generation technology. So what we would consider beyond next generation technology, something that could be anywhere between 50 to 1,000 years ahead of us. Hey, I'm talking about that UFO phenomenon stuff, that alien stuff. This is what the guy's admitting here. And for us, I think it's when you're looking at the observation and these things, how they can outperform, frankly, anything that we have in our inventory. And we're pretty certain anything that our foreign adversaries have in their inventory, yes, then yes, <coughs> obvious as... Obviously, as human beings, we tend to go down that rabbit hole of, of speculation. Here's another one. The reporter asks, but in common parlance, I guess, is that something that you would refer to as an alien or a time traveler? 
is there any sort of way you could, you know, more specifically? And then there was some audio distortion. Elizondo replies, sure, so yeah, I've said before this is something, and I guess may have just said it again, but that this could be something from outer space, inner space, or frankly, the space in between. Maybe like a fourth dimension, huh? Maybe something demonic in the spiritual plane, huh? But anyways, there's a lot of options out there. This could be something that is extra hyperdimensional in a woo-woo sense. I mean extra dimensional in a quantum physics sense. We know that the universe is full of shortcuts and loop holes. You remember where uh, the devils come out? The Bible says pit. Holes, a.k.a. holes. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Another question, uh, another question here. This is a lot of interesting stuff. And this is, I'm reading from a liberal news source, and this happened recently. The reporter asked, several of these UFO sightings have been above secret nuclear weapons facilities. Almost every major nuclear power across the globe really has reported <coughs> and declassified these sightings. You have talked extensively about the connection here, which might be helpful, I think, for some people to hear in advance of my next question, which is whether or not the U.S. government has considered utilizing nuclear-powered naval fleets to lure these kind of things, that, that, that Nephilim stuff, to further study them. Elizondo says, Wow. So first of all, Jackie, thank you for asking such a thoughtful question. Obviously, you've done some homework. And I also want to, by the way, thank you. Blah, 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 blah. Forget this. Okay, he's praising her. Okay. Next. Yes, that is, that is one of the concerns we have from a national security perspective. That there does seem to be some sort of congruency or some sort of intersection between these UAP or UFO sightings and our nuclear technology with nuclear propulsion, nuclear power generation, or nuclear weapon systems. Furthermore, those same observations have been seen overseas in other countries. They too have had the same incidents. So that tells us this is a global issue. Now, in this country, we've had incidents where these UAPs, so UAPs, that's uh, these aliens, okay? have interfered and actually brought offline our nuclear capabilities. And I think to some, they would probably say, well, that's a sign that whatever this is, is something that is peaceful. But in the same context, we also have data suggesting that in other countries, these things have interfered with their nuclear technology and actually turn them on, put them online. So that is equal, equally for me just as concerning. I think that there's certainly at this point enough data to demonstrate that there is an interest in our nuclear technology. They have an interest in their nuclear technology. Why is that? Well, just like Avengers, what can wipe out uh, those foreign beings out there in space, a nuclear bomb. You just need an Iron Man or someone made of Iron da Daniel too to deliver the nuclear bomb over to uh, those, uh, over to those uh, beings out there and destroy them. Those beings who are coming down out of heaven to destroy the earth, that's God and his angels. That's us. We're going to come down out of heaven one day and come down and conquer this earth. But then... The nuclear armaments that this world had might come in handy. And maybe that's why those Nephilim, they're interested in that. Just like the Avengers movie would show. Look, there's a lot of, what I'm telling you, there's a lot of connections here. This is all connected. I really believe this, okay? If you don't believe it, that's okay. But at least all this stuff that I'm saying to you is good food for thought. And when you look around your world, your eyes might be opened a little bit. Uh, here's another one. You have nuclear-powered submarines, some of those with nuclear weapons on board, or nuclear, certainly nuclear capabilities. I'll just say that. So I think, yeah, it shouldn't be a surprise that maybe there is an increased interest in our capabilities as it relates to our nuclear technologies. 
And Elizondo continues, we see an interest in our nuclear capabilities, and then we have this really bizarre what, I don't know if you call it an interest, but there seems to be a connection with water, and these things have a tendency to be seen in and around the water. Well, what, what do those devils want in the demoniac of Gadara? They all jumped into water. Demons love water. That's why their home is the lake of fire. Oh, another thing, how does the alien antichrist comes out? Out of the sea, Revelation 13, 1. Oh, by the way, uh, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman told you about that long time ago, about stuff, they don't come from above, they come from below. And you thought he was crazy. That guy is definitely a prophet, I will tell you that much. That guy's a prophet. Uh, he has a lot of interesting stuff. The fourth observable is what we were talking about, and that is transmedium, travel and water. The ability for an object to fly not only in our atmosphere, low and high altitudes, but also potentially in a vacuum environment like space and even underwater. Just read that whole transcript, okay? There's a lot more juicy stuff there. This was recent. So then what happened is the government are, is trying to shut him down. But uh, the Washington Post, because they have some liberal power, he was able to use that to, to give the reports on what's going on. So that is very recent. Guys, there's a, everything's tied. That's how I see it. Everything is tied. He is coming, all right? from below. But when he is coming, that means yeah. our Savior is coming even yeah. sooner. Amen? All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Now, God, my Father, I pray that tonight's teachings have uh, been eye-opening to us in realizing that book is true, it's real, and that people should have a fear of the Lord and get saved before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.